module. In the command module Odyssey, a warning light flashed on. Main bus B undervolt. When they appraised the situation, the three men concluded that two-thirds of their fuel was gone. They were 200,000 miles away from Earth, and only one oxygen tank was keeping the remaining fuel cell and the astronauts alive. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Main B bus undervolt. Roger, main B undervolt. Stand by 13, we're looking at it. Okay, uh, right now, uh, you said the uh, voltage is, uh, is looking good. Uh, we had a pretty large bang associated with the uh, caution and warning there. And as I recall, main B was the one that uh, had an amp spike on it uh, once before. For perhaps no other time in the program, not even during Apollo 11, the world's attention became focused on the status of three astronauts. Here is a bulletin from ABC News. The Apollo 13 spacecraft has had a serious power supply malfunction that could cause the lunar landing mission to be terminated early. NASA worked unceasingly to bring the astronauts home. The crew moved to the lunar module Aquarius and shut down all equipment except life support and communications. Even this might not be sufficient because the LEM was designed for two men for 45 hours of use, and Apollo 13 was approximately 90 hours away from home. It was sort of a bad position to be in. Uh, uh, we were going in the wrong direction. The Earth was back there, and we had to go around the moon, use the moon's gravity to twist us around, and then uh, use the lunar module, really, which was very fortunate that we had a lunar module. Had this happened on our Apollo 8 flight, the three of us would probably be a monument to the uh, space program that'd be going around uh, forever up there. Uh, but fortunately, we had the lunar module and we used its engine, uh, used its oxygen system and everything like that to get us back safely. And of course, finally, it would not make a re-entry into the Earth. Uh, it's a very flimsy vehicle. And we climbed back into the command module just before we hit the atmosphere. And uh, I'm glad to be here to talk about it today. Before the ordeal was over, Lovell, Hayes, and Swigert would overcome life-threatening obstacles and nightmarish conditions. Their physical well-being was eroded by cabin temperatures that approached freezing. Increased humidity permeated both men and equipment, first with water, then ice. Much of the dehydrated food designed to be mixed with hot water was unusable. In addition, water itself was rationed. Hayes developed a kidney infection. Reaction time slowed as the astronauts succumbed to dehydration, fatigue, sleeplessness, and the cold. The lunar module systems could not handle the high levels of carbon dioxide produced by the astronauts. Using directions supplied from a mock-up made in Houston, the astronauts used available materials to adapt air purification units from Odyssey to function in Aquarius. This working relationship between the stranded men and the ground crew typify the around-the-clock efforts of all concerned with Apollo 13's welfare. And yet, nothing went fatally wrong. Critical burns were accomplished successfully. The command module, essential for re-entry, powered up without a hitch after lying dormant for three days. Before re-entry, the command module separated from the LEM, and Apollo 13's lifeboat drifted slowly away. Okay, copy that. Farewell, Aquarius, and we thank you. Five days and 22.9 hours after liftoff, cameras on the aircraft carrier Iwo Jima captured the most important splashdown in the history of the Apollo program. The capsule settled in the water only three miles from the recovery ship. Despite a launch that was postponed to January 1971, Apollo 14 was an unqualified success. The command module had been modified. Alan Shepard was ready, and his crew, consisting of lunar module pilot Ed Mitchell and command module pilot Stuart Rusa, were eager to prove themselves. You just did not ever consider a failure that happened, that did happen on Apollo 13. So that uh, we wrote a new chapter and we modified the spacecraft and Apollo 14 went from uh, uh, July 
of 70 launch to a January 31st launch. And uh, the spacecraft was fixed, even though the launch schedule was delayed. Their destination was Fra Mauro, the area where Apollo 13 was to have landed. It was the first mission to the lunar highlands and the first to be devoted entirely to scientific study. Fifteen orbital and surface experiments were carried out, as many as on Apollos 11 and 12 combined. While Rusa stayed aboard the command module Kitty Hawk, Shepard and Mitchell took Antares to the moon's surface. They stayed 33 and a half hours, exactly two hours longer than Apollo 12. Nine and a half hours were spent in extravehicular activity. During the pair of EVAs, the two astronauts deployed the equipment in their ALSEP, or Apollo Lunar Scientific Experiments package. They also collected more than 90 pounds of samples, which they transported in a special handcart. The second moonwalk involved a climb up the 300-foot slope of Cone Crater. Judging distances on the moon was misleading, and the astronauts were exhibiting signs of stress. I don't think we'll have time to go up there. Oh, let's give it a whirl. Gee whiz, we can't uh, stop without looking at the cold crater. Okay. Well, press on a little further here. Okay, and uh, so right now we have a 30-minute uh, uh, extension. Looks like we'll be approaching the bend here very shortly. Unfortunately, Shepard's heartbeat increased to the point where it concerned mission doctors on Earth. Shepard and Mitchell were ordered back. Later, they discovered they had been only 25 yards from the top of the crater. Their disappointment was eased by the fact that they had traveled farther from the lunar module than either Apollo 11 or 12. There was still room for humor, as Shepard proved when he indulged in a game of golf using a makeshift club fitted with a real head. Uh, drop it down. So I'm going to try a little sand trap shot here. That looked like a slice to me, Al. Miles and miles and miles. Upon returning to the Kitty Hawk, Shepard made a more serious speech, asking for world peace in light of the continuing conflict in Vietnam. None of the networks carried the transmission. It was an indication of the growing indifference with which the American people viewed their space program. It was no longer novel. That would change briefly with Apollo 15 and the introduction of the lunar rover. David Scott, who had flown on Apollo 9 and had been Neil Armstrong's partner during Gemini 8, commanded the spacecraft's Endeavour and Falcon. Jim Irwin handled the chores of lunar module pilot, and Al Worden was the command module pilot. Their liftoff came two years and ten days after Apollo 11. Uh, the mission commander on my flight was Dave Scott. He'd been on Apollo 9 before, and so he'd been up in one of these things prior to our...